Uh, so next I'm going to talk about the option screen. Uh, that's the second of the three input screens. So this, uh, let me <laughs> go back here and uh, maybe make this look like a little bit more of a normal building. Um, so very nice building there, Craig. Um, so one thing I'm going to point out is, so Craig mentioned that there is an interaction between this screen here and the option input screen. And he talks specifically about the orientation and the neighbor's categories as affecting what gets displayed here. Uh, there's a couple other categories uh, that impact this rendering as well. Um, one is there's an eaves category. Uh, so the fact that there is right now, uh, I think it's probably a two-foot eave uh, being rendered, as well as the uh, amount of window area that you have on the different sides of the building. Uh, those are set on the other screen and they, and they dictate how the rendering gets displayed. Um, but there are also interactions in the opposite direction, which is to say that what I draw here impacts what I see on the option screen. So as an example, I'm going to go down to the foundation level, and I'm going to go ahead and actually make this a crawl space. Um, so now when I switch to the second input screen, the options input screen, um, so again, these are the groups and categories that Craig talked about before. There's a section called foundation slash floors, and so here's a crawl space category that's showing up. If I were to switch back to the geometry screen and put this in as an unfinished basement, and maybe part of it is actually a finished basement, then when I come back to the option screen, now I have finished basement and unfinished basement showing up. Um, and just a quick note, uh, we do have slabs specified under the garage, garage uh, but it doesn't show up in BOPS because it's not a surface that you'd necessarily be insulating. The garage is not a conditioned space, so the slab would only show up if you had drawn it underneath uh, some of the conditioned space. So if I had some, drawn some here underneath living space, um, now the slab category would show up. Um, so on this screen, essentially what we're trying to do is uh, describe the building components that make up our building. And we are in, as Craig talked about before, design mode, where you specify entire buildings one at a time. So we have a tab here called My Design. And within My Design, uh, you're going to have one option selected in every category that makes up the building components of that design. So if I come to Wood Stud category, if I were to click on R19, it's going to automatically unselect R13 because I can only have one type of wall construction in my building. Uh, likewise, if I were to go down to, let me scroll down a little bit, uh, here's the choice of what type of window I have. Um, I could I could pick a uh, triple pane window instead of a double pane window. Um, scroll down further, and there's some uh, equipment categories, like the air conditioner, so I could pick that I've got a SEER 15 air conditioner instead of a SEER 13, et cetera. So in design mode, you're limited to selecting one option in every category um, to make up your building. Um, if you look at the different groups and categories in BAPT, you can see that we do do a whole building simulation. Um, so from the start, we've got some more general um, categories related to uh, a lot of the operation and occupancy, um, the building itself in terms of orientation and if they're neighbors, there's a number of different envelope categories that will appear or disappear based on what spaces you draw on the geometry screen. Um, got some things about airflow, appliances, lighting, uh, equipment, HVAC equipment, uh, water heating, and uh, PV down here. Um, uh, so this is all specific to my design. Uh, you can actually right click on my design and you can choose to give it a name. So I'm going to actually call this, let's say, my base design. Uh, then I'm going to right-click on this, and I'm actually going to create a new design. And I'm going to go to the wood stud wall category. And instead of R19 carbon glass bats, I'm going to say I've got R21. And perhaps I also have on the outside uh, R5 XPS uh, foam insulation. Um, I'm going to right-click on this, and I'm going to say, this is my improved design. And then you can right-click again, 
And any time that you right-click on a design and create a new design, it'll preserve the selection that you had. So now I've got everything that was in my improved design, and maybe now I want to make some changes and I want to uh, evaluate uh, a two-stage air conditioner. So let's put a CR18 air conditioner in there, and perhaps an upgraded uh, furnace as well, 92.5% uh, uh, AFUE. And so I'm going to rename this guy, and perhaps I call this my best design. Um, so now we've got three unique designs uh, described, and all of them are going to have the same geometry that I drew on the geometry screen. Um, now one thing I'll point out is that uh, as I made my selection here on the right side, uh, you can see that there's this little list over here that we call the matrix, and it actually gives you a quick preview uh, or snapshot of what you've drawn. So I've got option six selected here, and it's showing me that out of all the different options, and when I hover over them, it shows the name. I've got option six selected. Um, like if I click on seven, it'll show seven selected, and you can actually click here as well. Um, it's, it's an active display as well. So this is a helpful way um, to sometimes, as you get more familiar with the BOPT options, or if you don't want to click on each category one by one, you can you can quickly see what you've got to find in the building. Um, so that's a, a useful little capability. Um, there are a couple of unique categories in BOPT. Uh, the first is in the walls group here. Uh, all of the walls would stud through other. Um, at the moment, BOPT can only uh, model a single wall construction for the entire building. Um, so these categories are actually mutually exclusive. If I click on double wood stud wall category, the option selected is actually none. And that's true of all these different wall constructions because I have a wood stud wall option selected at the moment. If I actually was wanting to evaluate a double wood stud wall option and I select an option here, you can see in the wood stud category that the option went to none, automatically got selected. So BF is preserving the fact that only a single option across these different categories can be selected uh, at one time. Um, so that's true of walls down here, and the other plates where that shows up has to do with HVAC equipment, uh, where you can only have a single uh, heating and single cooling equipment uh, in your building. So at the moment, I have a, a central AC and a furnace defined. Uh, the boiler, the electric baseboard, air source heat pump, ground source heat pump, these are all set to no. If I were to go to the boiler category and select the boiler option, the furnace would get set to none, but now I have a boiler with a central air conditioner. Um, or if, for example, if I picked the heat pump option that provided both heating and cooling, and I selected one of these options, both the the air conditioner and the boiler now get set to none. Um, so just be aware that that, uh, that BOPT is doing that for you, that uh, you can only have one heating and cooling equipment uh, at a time. Um, a quick mention here as far as references go. Um, so there's a drop down up here that's, that asks you what you want your reference to be. Um, and it defaults to the first design that you created, so it's saying base, and that's my user design here. Um, what the reference is used for is for evaluating energy savings relative to this reference, and incremental costs will show up also in BOP. Uh, so if the base is my reference like it is now, um, the base is going to have 0% energy savings, and these two b designs will then have energy savings relative to the base. Um, you've got some flexibility. You could pick any one of your user designs as the reference. Alternatively, you can you can choose what's called the B10 benchmark. When I choose this, I actually get a an extra uh, tab up here. Um, the B10 benchmark uh, is an automated benchmark uh, for new construction as part of the DOE Building America program. Uh, it's loosely based off of the IECC uh, 2009 reference. And so it is automated in that uh, it's essentially supposed to represent sort of a code or general practice building uh, in a given area. Uh, so uh, the specification, for example, of how much wall insulation, uh, both in terms of inside the cavity and exterior foam insulation, uh, this is automated based on what climate zone I'm in. Um, if I were to pick a different climate, it's possible that, that the benchmark would have 
uh, some exterior wall sheathing uh, insulation, for example. Um, so, uh, and everything is grayed out because this is automated into B out. So you can't change these, but you can view them. Now, um, one thing you can do is you could say, well, perhaps I want to start with the B10 benchmark, but then I want to override it in some ways. And so in that case, you can choose a user-defined reference. And whenever you choose a user-defined reference, the previous selection for the reference was preserved. Uh, so the, I still have my selections for that benchmark reference building. Uh, but now I can actually go over and override, uh, let's say, for the attic installation, uh, I want my reference to have uh, R25, for example. Uh, so now I'd be, I'd be evaluating uh, energy savings for three, these three designs relative to this user-defined reference that I created. Uh, one last thing I'll mention on this screen is if I come down to the HVAC categories, uh, whether it's a heating or a cooling uh, category, uh, there are inputs for specifying the size of the equipment. Uh, we allow you to either auto-size, and this will use the manual J uh, auto-size algorithm, uh, or you can specify a size if, if you want to uh, fix the size of that system. Um, so this would be a the, for the air conditioner, the cooling uh, capacity, uh, for the furnace, uh, you could likewise specify heating capacity or auto size. Um, and these specifications can be done on a design by design basis. So in my reference, for example, I could have a 100 kb2 per hour uh, gas furnace. Uh, and then in my designs and comparing against that, I could have them all auto size. Um, so there's a lot of flexibility in BOPT for, for HVAC sizing. Uh, so at this point, uh, we've defined uh, three different designs that we want to evaluate against a user-defined reference.